so uh, we talked about the uh, co-function identities and we talked about these identities right here the reciprocal identities the quotient identities and the Pythagorean identities this is the big one that you need to remember and if you want to just memorize the other two that's fine or you can do the same thing that we did if I go through and I divide everything by sine squared that would turn this into a one that would turn this into a cosine squared over a sine squared cosine over sine right here is a cotangent so that why that that's why that one's cotangent squared and then one over sine or cosine uh, sine squared would be cosecant squared um, so if you have that one memorized you can fairly quickly come up with the two of these um, I kind of remember them this way so here's sine and cosine okay those are those are together these two are cofunctions so cotangent and cosecant are related through a Pythagorean identity and these are not cofunctions okay tangent and secant if I had to put them in order of the ones that are the easiest to work with um, probably sine and cosine then tangent and secant um, and then cotangent and cosecant Okay, generally that's about how it works. But um, then we went through and we applied those identities and we went through and solved some problems. And we left off on these problems right here. So let's make sure that we've got the right answers on each one of these. Um, and then I'll, I'll fill in the extra information right here. So we set this one up and we said you could solve this one by saying, look, if we've, if we've got this angle right here and we know that side's 50, we can find that one right there using a tangent. Um, tangent of 71 is not something that you'd ever memorize. Um, we're expecting this side to be a little bit bigger. Um, and I mentioned before, and let's just make sure we're clear on this because this will come up over and over again. In a trig class, before you start typing something in, what should you do on your calculator? Just double check the mode. We need to make sure that we're in degree mode. So I'm going to come down here, change to degree mode, click back to the home screen, and then in order to solve this right here, I need to get the y all by itself. So right now we're dividing by 50, so what do I do to get the y by itself? Yeah, we're just going to times both sides by 50. So I'll multiply by 50 over here, 50 over there, those will cancel, and I get y equals 50 times the tangent of 71.5 degrees. So we just type that in just how it looks there. So 50 times the tangent of 71.5 Okay, remember, we were expecting a fairly large side here, and that's pretty darn big, 149.43. So this is 149.43, and this would be in this would be in feet, right? 149 feet. Just for the heck of it, watch what happens if I type the same thing in. And let's say I didn't check my calculator. It gives me an answer of negative 47. Okay, so we'd know there's something wrong there. Okay, that's why it's a good idea to kind of have an, an idea of what you're looking for. We're looking for an answer that's bigger than 50. Definitely got to be positive. Um, if we used uh, radian measure, we'd get the wrong answer. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right here. And we talked about what questions could be asked on this one. Um, they could ask us, how long is this side right here? So they might ask us something like that. Or they might ask us to figure out how big is this angle right here? Okay, what's theta? So how would we figure out this side length right here? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I'm going to replace that. I'm going to replace that with an A. So I could say A squared plus 200 squared equals 400 squared. Or let's stop and think about this for just a second. Do, do those sides look familiar at all? Look at, look at how big this side is in comparison with the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is twice as big, or the, this leg right here is half the size. What type of triangle is this? It's a 30, 60, 90. Okay? So that means to go from the short leg to the long leg, I'd take that short leg and do what with it? Multiply by radical 3. Remember, it's a radical 3 because it's got a 3 in the name of that triangle. So this one should be 200 radical 3. Now, just for the heck of it, let's see what we get when I move this to the other side. So this would be a squared equals 400 squared minus 200 squared. 
So I'll take the square root of both sides and I'll get this. I'll get A equals, let's just type that into the calculator and see what it spits out for an answer. Clear this stuff off. I'm going to have a big square root. I'll do 400 squared minus 200 squared. We get 346. We're expecting it to be bigger, okay? Because this would be the 30 degree angle and that would be the 60 degree angle. Let's see what 200 times radical 3 is. Matches perfectly, so that's good news. Okay, so this is 200 radical 3, if we wrote it down exactly, 346.4, um, and that would be in yards. Okay, and how big is that angle right there? 30 degrees, okay, so this is a 30 degree angle. That makes this a 60 degree angle. Any questions there? Okay, um, this is going to come up in the next section, so I just kind of want to introduce it now and just think about it for a second, kind of let that get in your head and let it cook. Um, let's say I wanted to figure out what this angle right here was, so I'm going to call that alpha. Okay, now I know the answer is 60, okay, but if I were to name these sides, this would be the opposite, this would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse, right? I know the adjacent is 200, and I know the hypotenuse is 400. Okay, is there a trig function that relates the adjacent side with the hypotenuse? Which trig function relates the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Cosine. Okay, so the cosine of that angle should be 200 over 400. So the cosine of that angle should be, if I reduce that, I get one half. And then we can stop and think about, well, what angle has a cosine of one, a, one half? What angle has a cosine, an x coordinate on the unit circle, of one half? Isn't that 60 degrees? Okay. So um, on your calculator, if you look at that, at the cosine button, do you see what the second function of the cosine button is? Okay. It's, it's not an exponent. It literally means the inverse, okay? So you could do this. You could take the cosine inverse of this side and take the cosine inverse of this side. I'd get alpha over here and the cosine inverse of one-half. And let's see. Let me make sure I'm in the right mode. If I do cosine inverse of one divided by two, it tells me the answer is 60 degrees. Okay, That's going to come up again. In this section, what they wanted you to recognize was the relationship between this leg and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is double, or the, this leg is one half the hypotenuse. That's got to be the relationship in the 30, 60, 90 and be able to recognize that. Okay, Or the Pythagorean theorem, I suppose. Okay, And what did we say about this problem right here? Not enough information. Okay. So what we'd want to, uh, what we'd need is um, some additional information that would tell us um, this is actually a problem from the textbook, and what it says is this is a ramp um, where it rises, um, whoops, one foot for every three feet horizontally. So for every one foot we go here or sorry, every three feet we go here, we go up one foot. So if this is four feet right here, how long would this have to be? It would have to be 12. It would have to be three times as big. So this would have to be 12. Okay. From that, could we figure out the rest of the triangle? I mean, again, this is a right angle right here. So if this is 12, sorry, this is 12 and this is 4, could I figure this side out? Pythagorean theorem, right? So c squared would equal... 12 squared plus 4 squared. So this is 144 plus 16. So that's going to be 160. So C is going to be the square root of 160, Okay, which we could simplify that. That's going to be 4 radical 10. And we could type that into a calculator and get a decimal approximation for that. So let me do the square root of 160. We get that number, and let's just double check with 4 square root 10, make sure we get the same answer. Okay. So if this is 12 and that's 4, this is a tw about 12.6. doesn't get that much bigger. Okay. So I'm going to write 12.6, okay. and that would be in feet, and this would be in feet. Oops. 
And what if they asked us for this right here? Any ideas on that? So what we've been doing for the most part, yeah. We, we, we could use a sign, or really we're going from the sides to an angle. What we've been doing most of the time is we've been going from the angle and figuring out the ratio of the sides. On this one, we'd probably go backwards. Now, I'm going to take this one right here because these are two nice numbers to work with. This is the opposite side right here, and this is the adjacent to si side to that angle. What trig function relates the opposite and the adjacent? The tangent. So I could say the tangent of theta is equal to 4 over 12, opposite over the adjacent. So that means that the tangent of theta is equal to 1 third. And how could I go backwards and figure out what that angle is? Inverse tangent, okay? So theta should equal the tangent inverse of 1 third. So we'll type that into the calculator. Are we expecting a very big angle right here? Not a very big angle, because this opposite side is pretty small. That angle hasn't opened up very much. So we'll type that into the calculator. Again, I think I've got this still in degree mode. So we're going to do second tangent. That'll be tangent inverse. And we'll do 1 divided by 3, and we get 18.4. Okay, So this is 18.4 degrees. And then we've kind of figured out everything we need to on that triangle. But again, not enough information with just the picture. You'd need something additional there. Okay, any questions? Okay, so um, this is just a little bit more practice with what we've just been talking about. Let's say I had to find the answer to these with a calculator and without a calculator. Now, this, says, this is pretty specific. It says find an angle between 0 and pi halves. So find an angle in the first quadrant between 0 and pi halves that has a sine ratio of radical 2 over 2. What angle would that be? What is it? 45 degrees or pi fourths, right? Okay. Where is the y coordinate on the unit circle? Radical 2 over 2, right here at 45 degrees, pi fourths, right? So the answer on this one is pi fourths. Okay, now if this is 0 and this is 1.57, Here's the tough part about using a calculator in radian mode. There's some really cool things about it, but that's not a number that we typically recognize. If this is about 1.5, right in the middle of that, pi fourth should be about half of 1.5, so about 0.75. Let's have the calculator figure out what that is. We'll do pi divided by 4. 0.785 is what it is. Okay, And, like we just talked about, if I have the ratio... If I have the sine ratio, how could I figure out what angle goes along with it? Use the second function of the sine key. Use the inverse sine. So if I hit sine, whoops, if I hit sine inverse, and then I type in a radical 2 divided by 2, this should give me 45 degrees or pi fourths radians. I'm in degree mode, so it gives me this. That's a little bit comforting. If I change the mode, and I change into radian mode, this should give me this 0.785. So I'm going to recall that command. And there we go. Okay? Um, let's do this one in the opposite order, and then let's kind of reason our way to the answer. Okay? I want to know what angle goes along with a tangent ratio of 1. So let's use the calculator for this. If I have the ratio and I want to find the original angle, we're going to type in tangent inverse of 1. And what is that? 45 degrees or pi fourths. So this is pi fourths, 45 degrees. And if you think about it, the reason that would be the case is at 45 degrees, this is a ratio. It would be 1 over 1. So if I wrote that side as 1 and that side as 1, what type of... What type of triangle is this? If these two are the same, got to be a 45, 45, 90. Make sense? OK, let's take a look at this last one. Is that a ratio that we would recognize? Nope. OK, let's think about 
that's the x coordinate on the unit circle. Or that's the adjacent side, and that's the hypotenuse. So if we were to draw a triangle for this, the hypotenuse is 1, and this is 0.9. How big is this side right here? Is it very big? Not very big. So we're expecting a fairly small angle. Okay. Now, this isn't one that you could figure out in your head. Okay. You've got to have a calculator in order to do this. So let's do theta would equal cosine inverse of 0.9. And again, we're expecting a fairly small angle. Um, I'm in radian mode right now, but if I go cosine inverse and I do 0.9, that's pretty small. It's about half the size of this one right here. So in radians, it's going to be 0.45. And again, think about it. This is 0. This is 1.57. Okay, 45 degrees is 0.785. So we're about right here. Okay, we've got a pretty good picture drawn. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to change the mode back to degree mode. And I'll recall that command. And let's have it tell us what it is in degrees. It's about 25.8 degrees. Okay, so that picture looks about right. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, that's, that's the end of 4.2.